it's Deb and Ali from Credible. We're here today with Lachlan Delahunty from Performance Property. He's a buyer's agent and we're here to talk about the Perth property market. Thanks for having me. How are things going? You busy at the moment? Yeah, yeah. No, we are. We are. The market is uh, doing some extreme things at the moment, certainly some record sales, but I don't think it's a time for anyone to panic because it seems to a lot of FOMOs kicked in and people are mm. starting to, to make some pretty irrational decisions. So. Mm. Irrational decisions? Yeah. 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 Big okay. time. Because yeah. there is that panic. There is. Yeah. FOMOs kicked in mm. and some of the sales that are coming through, it's, yeah, I think the problem is there's so many buyers out there. Mm. And it only takes a, a buyer to miss out on three or four properties just and just crazy. say, I'm not going to miss out on this yeah. at all costs yeah. without doing due diligence, without value on the property. And then they come out and they just set a new record for the suburb. Which sets a new precedent for the next for the next property. Yeah, that kind of effect. Yeah. yeah, so a bit of panic buying where most people are losing out on a few places and then yeah. just making a stupid offer of Well that's yeah, across the board. And again, like I said, there's there doesn't appear to be a lot of time in the market at the moment. So mm. things are selling within a week. So there's one home open and you can see in, in you know, blue chip pockets, you share the park, so yeah, goes all it's taking is, is one home open. Yeah. And here's people going in to make the biggest financial decision of their life. They've been, through, it. they've been through a property for 10 minutes with 45, 50 other people. Yeah. And then they get a call two hours after saying, we're submitting all offers at 5 p.m. Like yeah. that, that doesn't make any sense, it's right? a lot of pressure on. Yeah. I've had a couple of friends that have been looking and they're saying that things are, you know, they're seeing it online and it's going um, under offer before there's even been the first home yep. open and everything. So people are just like, yeah, mm. worried yeah, that they're going to miss out. Yep. Yeah. So what do you think has created this? Because uh, a lot of people said, or I've said that they think it's just going to be a bubble. bubble. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now look, it's if you look back to the data. So we've been buying properties here in Perth since 2018. Certainly the back end of 2019, and then the start of 2020, the market was quite favourable. We were seeing consistent um, increase in numbers in terms of median house prices and, and buyer activity, and also we're seeing a lot of stock come off. So 18 months ago, there's 16,000 properties on the market. Mm. Start of 2020 that sort of got down to eight and a half, nine thousand, 9,000. So a significant reduction over a period of time. So the market was really starting to kick up at the start of 2020. Got a little bit of momentum January, February, March. Then COVID oh, hit, right? Yeah. COVID hit. And everyone sort of started to panic. No one wanted to buy for a month. Yeah. That was a great opportunity for, for us as, <laughs> in buying, but the, the panic, the you know, no one knew sort of how it was going to play out. And then that you know, arguably did fuel it, um, the fire that was already there. And then from there it's kicked on, but it's just the momentum that's picked up after that. But the data, the fundamentals before COVID, and everyone thinks this is a COVID bubble. That's what I was right. going to say. I feel like a lot of people mm. feel like it's being driven because of COVID, mm. COVID. being a hotspot and you know, a great place to be, but you reckon that's not the case? No, well, like I said, we've been investing here since 18 based on the data, and we track top 30 population centres around Australia. So we're investing here for a reason, and like I said, we're going to share some of that data today. Mm. But it's understanding the fundamentals. So that, you know, Perth was in a 13 year stagnation period. Population growth was high, um, un un unemployment and underemployment were reducing, affordability has mm. never been more favourable. Mm. So the fundamentals were there, um, and I think without COVID, Perth was going to go through a growth period anyway. It's been fuelled yeah. potentially by interest rates more so than COVID, and yeah. now that sort of got the market moving, and, and, and Perth's coming off a really, really low base. So it will take, you know, and like I said, we're still very early days in the cycle, mm. potentially year one or two of a five, six, seven year cycle. So to think it's a bubble, um, I sort of disagree with, with that thinking. Because mm. the same people were saying that before Christmas. Yeah, the yeah. Christmas rush, it's getting too expensive. Now anything before you purchased before Christmas, mm. it's now a fantastic yeah, buyer, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, I think for, for all intensive purposes, the, well, certainly what we were reading in the press was that it was time for Perth to move, yeah. but it was going to be a slow move, certainly not fast like we're seeing it now. We also thought that perhaps it was just going to be Perth and the eastern states would come off, but from mm. what we can see, they're booming away as well. Yeah. So yep. obviously we've still got legs. Are you finding that it's a lot of people wanting to, or looking at buying from the eastern states at all from overseas? No, what Australia? it's interesting, it's, it's, a lot, it's just local buyers at the moment. Wow. There, okay. is, there is interstate and expat activity, people buying things sight unseen. Mm. There's no doubt about that, but at the moment, and that's what people are probably failing to see, but we've sort of been dealing with local buyers. There hasn't been a lot of East Coast investment mm. or overseas investment. There has been parts of it, people returning, people who've been in America mm. and want to return, right? Mm. Perth's probably set the blueprint of how to handle COVID and, yeah. and the lifestyle and everything else. So there's no doubt there's going to be a lot of people migrate back to WA mm. and that has definitely created a bit of activity. But now the borders are open, we're starting to see 
to meet these guys. Investment after tight coming to the market. Okay. We haven't seen that yet. So we've only been dealing with local buyers. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we're one firm that deals nationally. There's mm -hmm. four, you know, three or four others on the East Coast. They're all setting up, you know, camp here to, mm -hmm. to buy properties. So now we have to start to compete with East Coast and overseas, and then wait till the you know, international rivals come in. That adds another layer of competition. Mm -hmm. So what spurred the city market of 16, 17 was investment activity. All we've seen in Perth at the moment is own occupier yeah, activity. All a large portion of it. So yeah. for those who are feared or calling it the bubble. Mm -hmm. My fear is wait till there's investment activity in the market because that, that's going to make it more competitive than it already is, which is hard to fathom, um, but it's reality. So that, that's, a, that's a real possibility.